Hello. Well, today I'm uh, just going to talk about a generalization or some sort of overview or just my overall thoughts on uh, the works of Quentin Tarantino. Uh, his new film, Once Upon a Time in America, comes out today. And, uh, you know, it might be until, like, next week I can actually make a video regarding that movie. So in the meantime, I thought, you know, why not just talk a little bit about the films of his? And, uh, I enjoy his movies, honestly. Um, I've mentioned, uh, some before. I know Reservoir Dogs for a fact I have mentioned. Uh, I made, like, a top ten list of my favorite films. That was on the list. Um, it's number five, I believe. Yeah. At least it's not number five currently. Um, it's been a while since I made that uh, video. It's been a while also since yeah, I made that list. I believe, though, that was there when I did it. Uh, I know I shifted some stuff because I you know, reevaluated it. I changed some uh, spots regarding or some, not in that film, but some other films, um, move some up and some back, but that's, that's always been in the top five, so, um, that's up there, uh, I've all, oh, always said that was, that's my favorite movie, I think that's his best film, many do say Pulp Fiction is his best work, I don't agree with that, but, you know, we all have different opinions. Um, I could possibly get into more of a discussion doing a video as to why I like these certain films and why I might like some less. But what I'm going to do first is uh, talk a little bit about this, the Quentin Tarantino 20th anniversary collection of uh, eight films from... Quentin Tarantino. Uh, so one is just the one he's written only. And I'll also get into why another film he's credited for writing, but you know, it's not on here. So, this is a great set and includes Reservoir Dogs, uh, True Romance, which he wrote, uh, Pulp Fiction, Jackie Brown, Kill Bill, 1 and 2, but well, that's actually one movie, because uh, it was always intended to be one movie, but if you wanted to sit and, uh, in a theater for four hours, even though I'm sure there would have been a break in between uh, the parts, uh, Death Proof and Inglorious Bastards, and this set also has two bonus discs, uh, with 15 hours of bonus features, uh, you know, if you've bought any of the standalone Blu-rays prior to this, one I do, I have two Blu-rays that are included in here. I have Reservoir Dogs, which is over there, because over there I have, like, my top favorite films. And a couple of my favorite filmmakers, which some of those films also are a part of. Obviously, Quentin Tarantino's in this section, though I have a couple here to help support that, because, uh, this is pretty big, and, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a bit much, uh, well, it'd be all lopsided, and, yeah. And the other film I had on Blu-ray before this pack, or this set, is Pulp Fiction. Um, this is like the, this was, when exactly did this come out? This, this Blu-ray. It isn't showing me. Don't know. What does the disc say? Okay. 
I don't know when the Blu-ray came out. So that's unfortunate. But it did come out obviously before this set, because otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. But the I do have multiple versions of pulp of Reservoir Dogs. I like the 10th anniversary DVD, 15th anniversary DVD, and the 15th anniversary Blu-ray. Because as much as I like the Blu-ray's high quality, it has features lacking from the DVD. So owning the both DVD sets and the uh, Blu-ray, you have everything. Um, though I can't think offhand exactly what is on the Blu-ray that isn't on the DVD. Uh, it's been a while since I've checked and compared. But anyway, um, so some of the features that are on this set, which is really cool, is uh, Quentin Tarantino, 20 years of filmmaking, an in-depth look at a career that started with a bang and two decades later continues to inspire fans and filmmakers worldwide. Piece reflects uh, uh, includes reflections from co-workers, stars, and master filmmakers, as well as a special tribute to his greatest collaborator, Sa Sally Mankey, who was his editor. So in every film from Reservoir Dog until The Inglorious Bastards, she did not get to uh, do Django Unchained because she unfortunately passed away. Um, Jackie Brown, uh, film independent. At LACMA event, Quentin Tarantino, Robert For Forrester, and Pam Greer reunite for an intimate and enlightening discussion about Jackie Brown. Moderated by Elvis Mitchell, renowned film critic and curator of the film independent at LACMA series. Critics Corner, the films of Quentin Tarantino, in-depth critics discussion piece exploring Quentin Tarantino's work. Films that have redefined cinema and impact of one of the most influential writer-directors of our time. And a collection of Django Unchained trailers because this film, this set came out in 2012, which that year coincided with not only the 20th anniversary of Reservoir Dogs, but the release of Django Unchained, which... I will also say for like Blu-rays, my collection that will also have. Right, this is the Grindhouse set. Now, while this does have Death Proof on this set, um, this is the Director's Cut. So this does have material that is included that does that is not in this. Like it's a bit longer or so, I believe. Um, and this goes for 191 minutes, so 3 hours and 11 minutes. It includes trailers that this, the Blu-ray and also DVD, I have the DVD also. This Grindhouse Presents Death Proof. Um, the Robert Rodriguez Quentin Tarantino double feature. And it's a fun, it's a fun double feature to have, though... I will say I was disappointed with uh, Death Proof. That is the least favorite or beloved of his films, which he even him, he himself agrees on. And for me, the reason I'm not fond of it is because you know, you know, I know what Grindhouse films are. You know, they're supposed to be like B movies. Many times are horror movies. Um, not always. You know, sometimes they can have cheesy action films or something. Just ba basically B-rated films. You know, for a grindhouse, it'd be like a double feature. Uh, and uh, I think uh, Planet Terror, the uh, film that Rodriguez did. Yeah, and here you can see the uh, poster for Planet Terror and Death Proof. Right house, and also there's some more stuff. The main characters of those films, um, you know, with uh, Planet Terror, seem to really get and know what the uh, 
grindhouse spirit was. You know, it had it was fairly cheesy. Uh, where um, Death Proof doesn't really have that. It doesn't really have that cheese factor. The dialogue is too good. Also, halfway through the film, the quality looks good because you know it's like they have like the typical scratches and crappy uh, quality of like bad film print, like like a lot of, like scratches and other stuff and flickering and stuff, which is something that really appeals. Halfway through Death Proof, that goes away, and I think any charm the film had at that point, like first half really goes away also the dialogue is too good and if there's anything that people will always say with Quentin Tarantino he has great dialogue um, no matter what you think of him and his films you can't deny he has a great ear for writing how people talk and uh, to help round out the blu-rays is a uh... I have Django Unchained, the, uh, got this at Target with the, uh, steelbook, and, uh, this in here, I have the DVD, uh, in a, you know, one of those CD cases that have, like, you can travel with, because, you know, you never know, I want to travel, have DVDs, some places do have DVD players, so, pop in a movie, or take a uh, computer to play DVDs, and watch watch a movie. And Django Unchained one that I really love. This is a fantastic film. And at Target, they had a bonus disc, which is the stars of Django Unchained, at least that comic, 2012. So that's what that looks like. Um, and it's pretty cool. It's... It's really awesome. Um, and there's also a special, other special features here. One is 20 Years in the Making, the Tarantino 20 Blu-ray Collection, you know, XX. Um, you know, um, for the longest time, out uh, after Reservoir Dogs, my favorite Tarantino film was Pulp Fiction. But, you know, as time went on, and I was looking at his films, I think this has grown on me so much that this is now my second favorite Tarantino film. Uh, that could also change when I see Once Upon a Time in America, if I've seen it today, uh, or I see it sometime this weekend. Uh, you know, uh, as a, as a, I'm honestly recording this in advance before I release it so um, maybe I will really enjoy Once Upon a Time in Hollywood that if I reflect on that long enough and then I view it a few more times I don't know maybe that will be my second favorite I don't know I can't say yes or no but that movie does look good uh, so yeah Django Unchained it's really a, it's a fantastic film it's a great movie great cast Academy Award winning film too uh, like Pulp Fiction won for original screenplay. Tarantino wins his second Oscar for writing this film. Very much deserved. And Christoph Waltz wins his second Academy Award. Um, won his first for Inglorious Bastards. Um, and he's only he's the only actor uh, to ever win an Academy Award, now two, for being in a Quentin Tarantino film. Uh, John Travolta, Uma Thurman, and... Uh, Samuel L. Jackson all got nominated for Pulp Fiction. They all lost. Uh, oh, yeah. Robert Forrester was nominated for Jackie Brown. And I believe at that point up to Bastards and Django. I think that was it. Uh, yeah, I can't recall. And the others from Jackie Brown to that, yeah. And with him, got a Golden Globe nomination for uh, Kill Bill uh, Volume 1, I believe. And that was really it in terms of award nominated performances. Um, and this brings us to 
The Hateful Eight, and I really enjoy this film. Uh, it's a real fun movie. Uh, great cast. Dialogue, dialogue's really good. Um, I know some people weren't as fond of this due to, you know, uh, one Christmas, they, they talk too much. You know, not a lot, of, not enough action like, you know, his other films have, like, where there's a good, di decent amount of dialogue, but then there's a good amount of action. Um, I thought this was really cool. Um, uh, the Thing, that John Carpenter's The Thing, is heavily influenced by that, and, uh, yeah, Kurt Russell reteams with Tarantino after first time being death proof, and he, uh, sort of, uh, Got to be in his homage to you know uh, <laughs> the 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 his character or the film that's a homage to one of his most famous films he's been in and this reteams up with a uh, obvious regular uh, Samuel L. Jackson who ever since Pulp Fiction has really been in pretty much everything he's d did except for Death Proof. Again, Kill Bill is one movie. Tarantino has always said you should always look at that as one, not two, because this is his eighth movie. But if we're going to count Kill Bill Volume 2 as a separate movie, then this is a technically nine. Uh, but that is not how you're supposed to see it. Similar to Star Wars, George Lucas always said you're supposed to view that all as one movie. So I think similar thing, a plot, uh, very similar uh, principle thing, whatever you want to call it, applies with Kill Bill. Um, and yeah, this won an Academy Award for Best Original Score. The first time also uh, Tarantino ever had a full-fledged score where there aren't just uh, songs for the soundtrack um, yeah uh, Eno Maricone uh, and Eno Maricone finally won an Academy Award after many say he was snubbed and robbed well he finally got it and I believe it was very des deserved because it has a great soundtrack now I'm going to talk about some films that I also have with Quentin Tarantino associated. Uh, first up is Natural Born Killers. Now, hold on first. Uh, I'm going to set these uh, <laughs> back up right here. There you go. They don't fall. See, this is why I don't really like to have a lot of stuff. Display there. I'll, looks like it should stay. There you go. Good. Now I have mentioned how some of the stuff he wrote was not in here. Now we'll get to another major thing in a moment, but this was not included in this because Tarantino does not really see this as his own written word. Because Oliver Stone rewrote the entire film. He says it barely rep uh, it, it represents anything regarding his original vision when he wrote Natural Born Killers. So much so, like, yeah, the character names and stuff, and uh, sort of basic plot of they're, you know, they're criminals, they're killers. That's it. That's really as much as the names of the characters and them being killers is as close to the original script that you could possibly ever get, according to Tarantino. And Oliver Stone just did his own thing. As a result, he's not that fond of it. And I've seen this movie, and I don't know. I'm. Yeah. It's a fine movie, but yeah, I can kind of see. After viewing this and then hearing what Tarantino thought and then thinking about it or rewatching it, thinking about that again, I can I can see where what he's talking about. Um, it's a fine movie, but you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I can see why it's not 
included in the 20th anniversary set. So that's another movie that's always associated with Tarantino. And then here is From Dusk Till Dawn. Well, this one. Uh, which, you know, it's a vampire film. And uh, also here is the uh, documentary, which is really good. Um, I got this. I have all three. But the first one's really the only one worth watching, as well as the documentary. Documentary is really great. It made me enjoy the movie more. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Tarantino acts. I know he's not the best actor, but, you know, eh. I don't know. He doesn't do a horrible job. I'll just say that. Uh, could they have gotten somebody else out s instead of him? Yeah. Maybe he could have just had a cameo somewhere, but he didn't. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a, it's a fun film. Now the other film I don't have that he's also associated with, but I have seen is Four Rooms, where Tim Roth plays Ted the bellhop, and he you know works in a hotel, and it shows how these are short films that are all connected with Ted. He's in all of them, and it shows the various things he does throughout his uh, you know time his job as a bellhop and going to different rooms and rooms and all of this and that. And apparently it was supposed to be called Five Rooms because another filmmaker was supposed to uh, join in and help out, but yeah, that never happened. So uh, let me actually look up Four Rooms. I want to know who all wrote and directed those other shorts. Rooms. Here we go. American Anthology comedy film. Written, co-directed by Allison Anders, Alexandra, Alexander Rockwell, Robert Rodriguez, and Quentin Tarantino. All right. And I'll just say, I think uh, Tarantino's, which is the very last short, which is the last part of the film, the fourth one, that's the best part in my opinion. Uh, it's really a... Uh, really fun to watch uh, and it has a cast of everybody who's in them all of four of the segments Tim Roth is the lead so he was in there regular collaborator with Tarantino and uh, yeah uh, get, you know it's sitting as one of the biggest uh, disappointments of 95 you know, it wasn't a fantastic film, but it, it, it was sort of fun. It was a fun film, and uh, people, I don't know, when people watch it, they often really cite the last segment as being the best. I agree with that um, as well. Uh, it's one of those I don't necessarily share. I'm like, oh, the Rod Rodriguez one, uh, that, that segment is the best. You know, I... I do think the Tarantino one is the best. And, uh, I don't know. That's just my thought on it. And you know, he said that after four film or nine or after ten films, four nine, yeah, after ten films, he will be done forever um, making films. And uh, many people have wondered if he'll actually stay true to that. And if he'll actually follow through. He has even said he could make 11 or 12 uh, films in total. But he thinks 10 is a good number. Another thing is he doesn't feel like, you know, as many directors get older, they don't have as, they don't do make as many great films. Uh, Clint Eastwood is somebody who has made a lot of great films, even as he got has gotten older. I think American Sniper's a fine film. It's a great film. Um, I know some film people aren't too fond with that movie, but you know, um, I think as a film, it's good. You know, uh, The Mule, which I've seen, I, I, I enjoy. Um, there's various other films he's made. Unforgiven, Million Dollar Baby, 
letters to Iwo Jima, Flags of Our Fathers. This is in a pat. The, well, except for, uh, with the exception of Unforgiven, uh, all those films were made in this century, and they're all pretty fantastic. They're all good, at the very least. Um, and I think Quentin Tarantino is somebody who could make, continue to make films until the day he dies. Obviously, he would like to stop at when he feels he's on top, which I guess would be ten. He's gonna write a. He's written a Star Trek film. Unsure if he'll direct that or not. I have a. I don't know. I don't know if he'll direct it because it's like that would be the last film you would ever make. I'm not saying that he could. That can't be. But I mean, I don't know. I just. You know, it's just like it, it would seem like. You should make something else. I don't know. Well, it just be should just make something else for his tenth impossible last film he's also expressed interest in writing books on film like about filmmaking and stuff and to write plays and other books um, maybe he'll even do TV you know he's done so much with films you know, you know shift to the other visual medium of television aside from plays that would be I, I, that would be very interesting to see all of that, but part of me doesn't want him to quit making movies altogether. I really don't. Uh, maybe take a break and and explore all that stuff. You know, you know, write books, uh, write a play or two, and see how all that goes. Uh, do a TV series, miniseries, TV movie, but don't just give up making feature-length films, films to be seen on the big screen. Don't give up on that, because uh, I'm like, I'm, at, I'm talking to him now, though I doubt he'll ever see this, but he's just so great. He, he, he He's a great filmmaker, uh, great writer, and just, I, you know, I would just hate to have it do be 10 and done and never see another film from him ever again. I would really hate to see it, see that. Um, but, I don't know. Um, you know, it's whatever, you know. If that's what he does, he does that. Um, you know, I hope not, but uh, I can't control what Quentin Tarantino does. Uh, only, only he can. Uh, but I hope he if he does stop making movies, I hope he'll be happy writing plays and books and other stuff. Uh, he seems to be a writer for sure. Uh, maybe if anything, he'll just write mov write movies, even if he doesn't direct them. He'll, scripts will keep coming. At the very least, let's hope for that. Uh, so that's all I really have to say. It went a lot longer than I expected, but. I don't know, I kind of want to give my sort of overview thoughts on the general works of Quentin Tarantino and what's associated with him and his filmography. Uh, yeah, I guess he directed an episode of, like, I think, The X-Files? I don't know. How, not, 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 I know he got nominated for an Emmy, but now I want to know if that was The X-Files or I'm just thinking of something else. Because that could be. CSI, okay, yeah. Uh, wrote the story and then directed CSI. Based on the... Bust the bomb. And he directed an episode of ER that he did not write. Wow. First thing he ever directed, he never didn't write. Very interesting. So we got nominated for hmm, Best Director, yeah. Emmy for Outstanding Directing. Okay, never mind. That's Outstanding. I forgot. CSI. I don't know. It was it was like one of those shows, like a crime show of sorts. And though uh, X Files is more sci-fi and exact. Uh, I don't really watch X Files. I know very 
a little of it. I know Mulder and Scully. That's uh, that wasn't a show I watched. So if you watch this channel, you love X Files. You know, don't hate me. I, I it was just something I could never really get into. It just wasn't for me. I mean, and I do like science fiction, but I don't know. It was just some science fiction just sort of just turns you off. Just doesn't interest you or something. For me, it just didn't interest me all that much. But yeah, uh, now that I've gone on that tangent, uh, that really a tangent, just rambled. I should probably stop because this really went a lot longer than I actually expected. And uh, hope to wrap the suit, but clearly that was not going to happen. And uh, I'll just say uh, so long and. I hope to talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood next time. Uh, so, uh, hope you all have a great day, have a great weekend, and a great week. And I'll see you all next time.